please open your Bibles to Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. By the way, that clock, it's a little bit ahead of us. So don't worry about the clock. <laughs> then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all this I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Amen. God, bless your word in our hearts this morning. Speak to us. Holy Spirit, illuminate our minds so that we can understand your word. And God, give us the willingness and the desire that as we hear your word and accept your word, to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, we are continuing this morning with a series of sermons, Jesus and Your Problems. This is week number six uh, in the series of messages. We talked about worry, dealing with worry, dealing with fear, dealing with pride, dealing with guilt. Last Sunday, I preached on dealing with envy. And this morning, with God's guidance and strength, we will be talking about dealing with temptation. Dealing with temptation. From the very beginning, I want to tell you that temptation is not a sin. Temptation is not a sin. In fact, I would say that if you are being tempted, there is something good about you. Because I strongly believe that if you are on Satan's side, you are already his. He has nothing to tempt you with anymore. You are doing his will. However, if you are on God's side, if you are part of God's family, if you are a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you will be tempted. So just because you are tempted, that doesn't mean you have sinned. I want you to get that out there from the very beginning. So when it comes to temptation, I want to uh, give you a little bit what the, this morning what the goal of my message is. You see, every time I talk with the Lord during the week, when I prepare the messages, I have a goal in mind as a preacher. Um, most of the time, I do not tell you verbally what my goal is, you know, through that message. But once in a while, I choose to reveal to you verbally what the goal of my message is. And I want to share with you very briefly, I'm not even going to charge you for this this morning, what the goal of my messages this morning. The goal of my sermon is that by the end of the service today, as we will be adjourning, going home, that we will be able to have a good understanding of three important things. Number one, my hope is that by the end of the service we will have a good understanding of how temptation works. Number two, my goal and hope is that by the end of the service we will have a good understanding of how Satan uses temptations to cause us to sin. And number three, my hope and my goal this morning is by the end, that by the end of the service, we will have a good understanding of how we can deal with temptations God's way. So that in the end, when everything is said and done, 
God will be proud of each and every one of us. Amen? This is what we are here for on earth. We are here to point people unto Jesus and to live a life that is honoring our Lord of Lords and King of Kings, our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to his name. So that's the goal. Now before we do anything else, I believe that since we are talking about temptation, we need to know what temptation is. So let me give you a couple of definitions of what temptation is. By the way, God wants us to live lives that are powerful, that are successful, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit in everything that we say and do. Satan, on the other hand, uses temptations to cause us to sin so that we will not live victorious lives. Lives that display Jesus and his works. And this is why I believe this morning talking about this and preaching on this topic is so Christian, excuse me, so crucial to our success as Christians. Because I believe that if we have this down, oh, Satan will come, Satan will tempt us. But if we, if we have this nailed down and, and we have this embedded into our hearts and minds, and resist Satan. And the Bible says that as we resist him, he will flee from us. Then man, then we would be able indeed to live lives that are successful and blessed. And not only am I going to be blessed as a Christian here on earth, but God's kingdom will be blessed. And God's glory will be displayed everywhere I go and in everything that I do. This is why Preaching on temptation this morning is so important. So let me give you some definitions when it comes to temptations. Temptation. I believe that tempta temptation, I was going to say temptation, temptation. Temptation is an enticement of our natural God-given desires to go beyond our God-given bonds. Okay? This is what temptation is. Let me give you some examples. Eating. Take, for example, the activity of eating. Right? Eating is a God-given desire. We all need to eat in order to survive and live. Overeating is a sin. The Bible calls that gluttony. That is stepping beyond our God-given boundaries. That will be falling into temptation. Let me give you another example. Um, loving, love. Loving each other is a, is a God-given thing. It's throughout the Bible. Lasting after someone would be sin. That is going beyond, loving someone beyond our God-given boundaries. So temptation, here is a definition, is an enticement. One of those lures, man, that Satan has into his toolboxes. You know, haven't been fishing for a long time, maybe six, seven weeks. That's a long time to me. And uh, last Monday, I had the opportunity to go with Brother Rob, you know, down in the river. Monday morning, I picked him up at 6.15 from his house. We went in the river, got there a little bit after 7.00. We had fun. We just put our, you know, folding chairs there and had breakfast going there from quick trip and just sat there and hoping that the fish would bite. Uh, they didn't really bite with the exception of us getting one bass. But man, we, we, we were prepared. We had our bait, you know. So it was up to the fish to bite or not to bite. You know, so this is exactly what temptation is. It is an enticement. It is one of those lures, you know, from our natural God-given desires to go beyond, to exceed our God-given boundaries. Let me give you a couple more definitions. Temptations is basically an enticement to disobey God. Let's call it as it is. To rebel against him. 
and to have it our way. People call it a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake again. But God calls it sin. S-I-N. Amen, church? So temptation, again, is basically an enticement to disobey God, to go against God, to rebel against Him, and to have it your way. I was thinking about Channel 6 the other day, Channel 6 News. Do you know what their motto is? It's all about you, baby. They don't say baby, but I, I just put that up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's all about you. That kind of makes you feel good, doesn't it? Oh, better watch Channel 6. It's all about me. Really? Is it all about me? I don't think so. A Burger King, or I don't know what other, it says, um, have it your way. Is it Burger King or something? Yeah, yeah see, uh, Burger King says, you have it your way. Oh, I better go to Burger King because, you know, it's, it's about me. I'm going to have it my way. Okay? So this is what, my friends, temptation is. Uh, looking at the passage this morning, Matthew chapter 4, and have your Bibles open, we'll be digging right in. I want you to know that in Matthew chapter 4, Satan tempted Jesus in three specific ways. And I want to show you what these ways are from the Bible. We'll take them one by one, each one of these three temptations, and learn from them. First of all, I will say, according to our passage, that Satan tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread. Satan tempted Jesus to cast himself off the temple. And then Satan tempted Jesus to worship him. Okay? So we'll be taking these one by one and learn this morning about temptation. Temptation number one. Turn the stone into bread. Please look with me in the word of God. Matthew chapter 4. I'm going to start reading with verse 1 down to verse 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now pay attention to verse 2. And after fasting for 40 days and for 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. And now pay attention to verse 4. But he answered, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So here is what we have in this instance with this event. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and he was hungry. Now he was the son of God. He was divine, 100% God. But at the same time, he had a human nature. Not a sinful human nature, but a human nature just like us in the sense that he ate like we did, and he slept like we did, and he walked like we did, like we do. Okay? So Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days. He's hungry. And notice, please, how Satan jumped on the circumstance to tempt Jesus. I have a few questions for you. What was wrong with the suggestion that Satan had to Christ? If you are the son of God, command the stone to become bread. Think about this with me. What was wrong with it? Would it have been okay? Here is another question. Would it have been okay for Jesus to make bread? After all, you know, turn a few more pages and you'll see a, a miracle that he performed on a particular evening when he fed Thousands of people that day. Why was this a temptation? Is there anything sinful about bread? Can I get an answer from that? No. Here is another question. Was Jesus unable to make bread from stones that day? Was he unable to? No, absolutely not. What was wrong with this? 
It is what it was wrong with us. And it's wrong with every temptation, just about. Pay attention, please. In doing so that day, in taking that stone and turning it into bread, on that particular day, in that particular circumstance, my friends, Jesus, by doing so, he would have chosen doing the will of the devil instead of doing the will of God. Can God get an amen from that? Amen. And I want us to learn from here a beautiful lesson. And here is the lesson. Very often, Satan tempts us exactly the same way. Satan often takes advantage of our circumstances and he jumps on them right away wanting to take advantage of us. He takes our needs, basic needs, God-given needs, and tempts us, listen to this please, and tempts us to meet those needs in wrong ways. In illegitimate ways. Now listen to this. And you may feel justified, you know, by your need to give in to that temptation. Well, let me be plain and clear this morning. That it will always, 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 always lead to disaster. So notice, please, that Satan speaks. If you are... The Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Let me clarify a little bit the statement. I want you to know here that Satan is not casting doubt on whether Jesus was or was not the Son of God that day. That is not a, a, a question, well, if you really are the Son of God, then do this. Satan was not casting doubt there that day. Jesus knew that he was the son of God. And Satan knew also that Jesus was the son of God. I have no doubt about it. What is this about? If you look in the original. This if should be translated since. S-I-N-C-E. So here is how the statement reads. Since you are the son of God. Then tell the stone. To become bread. His strategy. It is what I want you to get from here. Is to make us believe. That God cannot be trusted. And we better take matters. Into our own hands. In order to fulfill our needs. Do you get the idea here? You could almost sense the innocence into his words. You know, oh, if, 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 since you are the son of God, why don't you just do it? Just go ahead and do it. Just turn these stones into bread. What's the big deal, Jesus? You are the son of God. Just do it. Keep in mind that Jesus had been without food for almost six weeks by now. And this temptation, therefore, was very, very real. One of the men of God whom I love and admire. I have no idols. My Lord is the center of my worship and my attention, by, but there are certain godly men, preachers, and teachers of the word of God that I look up to. There are not many, but there are some. And one of them, and he's right there on top of my list, is a man by the name of John Piper. How many of you heard of John Piper? Yeah, he's not too far from us. Bethlehem Baptist Church in the cities. I love this man. Every year I have the honor, end of January, beginning of February, for three days, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, to go up north in the cities. Uh, and he puts up a conference for pastors and church leaders. And he brings top-notch men of God from around the country to minister to us. Last, uh, not last, not last year, this year. So uh, this last event that he had in the end of January, I was able to go. 
And uh, I was able to have one of his books signed by him. I was able even to talk to him a little bit, take a picture with him. And uh, I just so happened that years ago, about 20 years ago, I was able to do mission with one of his boys in Europe. One of his boys, Carson. And I told him, I said, I know your son. I did mission with him in Europe. Oh, you know my, you know my son, how cool. So anyway, John Piper, when it comes to, to what I'm talking about here, here is what he says. John Piper says that sin gets its power by persuading me to believe that I will be more happy if I follow it. He continues and says that the power of all temptation is the prospect that it will make me happier. You get it? Satan speaks. Since you are the son of God, command the stone to become bread. And Jesus, my friends, answers. And what does he say? People do not live by bread alone. Notice, please, that in all three temptations, or with all three temptations, Jesus answers the same way. It is written. It is written. It is written. He did not allow the situation or the circumstances or even the enemy to tell him what the truth is. Amen, church? This is what the truth is. Satan, you can talk all day long and all night long. But I know in whom I have believed it. And I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen? Washington doesn't set the truth for me. Doesn't tell me what the truth is. The mayor of the city, I don't even know right now who he is, but I pray for him. <laughs> yeah, I'm honest. Okay? He doesn't set the truth. Denominations don't set the truth. Pastors don't set the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. And he sets the truth for me and you. Whether you like it or not. Amen? Amen. So, here is the application for us. Here is the application for us. We will never probably be tempted to turn stones into bread. It's not, it's not our thing, right? It's not our expertise. Instead, the devil, the devil's ploy is to make us believe that if we want something done, this is the, uh, the lesson for us here this morning. If we want something done, then we have to do it ourselves and not trust in God. And exactly true, exactly the opposite is what the truth is. God wants us to trust His way. God wants us to trust His plan. God wants us to trust His purposes. God wants us to trust His timing. Satan, though, will regularly try to tempt us to go outside the boundaries of God's will so that I can satisfy my personal needs and my personal desires. Think about this, you know. I was looking for my wallet. I don't have it on me this morning. Think about credit cards. You know, we all have them. We work hard, you know, for our living. One of temptation will be, hey, why don't you just take that credit card? The limit on that credit card is $10,000 or whatever. John, just, just go out and have it your way. Just do it, man. You deserve to be spoiled. Right? All kinds of temptations to go outside of God's boundaries. Or you're 18 years old, you just turned 18, you're a young man or a young woman, and, and Satan says, okay, now that you reach 18, just go out and have fun. Who cares about your parents anymore? Who cares about church anymore? 
You just turned 18. Go out and have it your way. We're learning this morning that we should not have it our way. We should have it God's way. Amen? Amen. Temptation number two. By the way, let me add this. The temptation to do it yourself is answered by a reliance on the word of God. It is written. Men shall not live by bread alone. Okay? It is written. It is written three times in the very same passage. Okay, so temptation number two. Throw yourself down. Or cast yourself off from the table. Excuse me, from the temple. Follow right along with me, please, in Matthew 4, 5 to 7. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written... He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Now listen to verse 7. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. It is what I want you to see here. Satan knows the Bible. Now, Satan is not omnipresent like God is. He cannot be in the same place at the same time. Amen? Amen. Satan is not omniscient like our God is, meaning he doesn't know everything, but Satan knows things. Notice, please, that Satan knows the scripture. He quotes Psalm 91. Notice, please, that this time... He wants Jesus to prove his identity, that he is the Son of God, by throwing himself down from the pinnacle or from the, the wing, the edge of the temple. By the way, what was wrong with this temptation? Jesus, my friends, had no command from God the Father to do this. Jesus had no command from God the Father to do this. Satan, notice please, quote Psalm 91. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. They will bear you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Here is what I want you to understand here. This temptation or the temptation or this particular temptation was to misapply a wonderful, beautiful gorgeous promise of God. And Jesus doesn't want to have any part in the circus. He replies by, it is written, and here is what he says next. Pay attention, please. Don't put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus refuses to do this for at least two reasons. Let me quickly mention them. Reason number one. People are never satisfied. You know what? Give them miracles and there will never be enough miracles. In fact, look in the New Testament and you'll see that often Jesus will do a miracle as he will be preaching the word of God. And after he will do the miracle, people will start following. I mean, who doesn't want to follow a king who can feed thousands of people in a day? But then soon after that, Jesus preaches and teaches Denying yourself. If you want to be my follower, you should pick up the cross and follow me. And all of a sudden, the crowds were gone. <laughs> they were not there anymore. So Jesus refuses to do this because he knows, deep down in, in his heart, that people are never satisfied. They will always want more signs, more miracles, one more show. And to have maintained his influence over the people... By the use of miracles, Jesus, again, would have had to produce greater signs, greater miracles. This is called sensationalism. Let me give you my word for it. Circus. Amen? Circus. Watch it. Be careful. Be aware of it. So Jesus refuses. And the second reason why I believe Jesus refuses to do this is because, notice please how he responds to Satan. 
Don't put the Lord your God to the test. The second reason why Jesus refuses to do so, because to test God is to doubt God. And to doubt God is not to trust God. And not to trust God, my friends, of course, is sin. And this is exactly what Satan wanted Jesus to do. Let me explain more. Satan was trying to get Jesus to manipulate God's word by putting himself in danger and forcing the Father to do a miracle that day in order to keep his promise that he, that he will take care of his son. And again, this is called sensationalism. It's, it's what I like to call masked unbelief. This is not faith. The devil wants us also to test God by saying, God, I am going to believe in you if you, and then you fill in the blank. In this case was to catch Christ so that nothing will happen to him. And this is how Satan works in our lives too if we are not careful. God, I am going to believe in you if you are going to do this. And you fill in the blank. If you're going to provide for my car payment, if you're going to give me perfect health, if you're going to help me make it to the best college that I want to get in. And this is not what God wants from us. God wants us to trust him completely. God doesn't want us to go to him on our own terms. God wants us to go to him on his own terms. And he wants us to believe that he will always work, my friends, for our good. Whether that involves a miracle or it does not involve a miracle. Amen? Whether I understand what God is doing or whether I don't understand what he's doing, I still need to trust him. So the devil here is tempting Jesus to disbelieve the Father. This is a spiritual attack. And Jesus doesn't go for it. No, no, God the Father, he will take care of me. It is written. Okay? So this reminds me and you this morning that we need to be grounded. We need to have our roots deep down in the promises of God. I'm reminded of that verse from the New Testament in which Apostle Paul writes and says, Be steadfast, immovable. Don't fall for Satan's tricks and schemes. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Do your part, knowing that your labor, your sweat, your allegiance to God and to his kingdom is not in vain. Amen? One more thing. It's only 11.30. I will take seven more minutes. That clock is ahead. Okay. <laughs> Temptation. <laughs> Temptation number three. Worship me. Uh, verses 8 to 10. Matthew chapter 4. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all of these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. I'll pay attention to verse 10. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. By the way, this promise includes a lie. It is what I want you to understand here. Satan claims, according to what we read, that he has been given ownership over the vast domain that he was showing Christ that day. Not only that, but this is a lie because Satan claims that he has the right to give domain of his ownership to whomever, to whomever he wishes. Now, let me explain this. Actually, Satan does have power as an enemy of God. But his power is a temporary power and his power is a limited power 
We do know from John chapter 12, verse 31, that he is called the ruler of this world. This is what God calls him. But Satan does not have the outright ownership. Satan only rules over the evil forces with God's permission. Amen? So notice, please, how Satan builds up this false claim. He declares, all of these things I'm going to give unto you, all you have to do is fall down and worship me. And he says, he says, he just one small act of worship. Nobody will even know it. And the ownership of the kingdoms of this world, he says, will be yours. Pay attention to this. Once again, the temptation is to claim immediate results. And this is how Satan works all the time. And I pray every day, God... Keep me patient. God, I want to be patient. Because the temptation is meant to, 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 to just get things and to go against God's timing. But both Satan and Jesus knew that the kingdoms of this world belong ultimately to whom, church? To God and to Christ, his son, who in the end will be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And will take us all home. All of us who have put our trust and faith in him. Amen. But the temptation was to bring this about now. The plan of God was different. The plan of God was that Jesus would fulfill his plan from eternity to be a servant before he would become the king. The devil was offering Jesus a kingdom. Here is how I look at this. A kingdom without the cross. Why go through all this trouble and all this pain to win this world when this world can be used right now for free? No suffering, no pain, no struggle, no sacrifice. Just switch allegiance, Jesus, and join my team. But here is what I understand from here. A crown without the cross would mean no forgiveness for me and you today. Amen? Amen. For God so loved the world. It was not Christ's timing. For God so loved the world. Jesus had the cross in mind from eternity because he was omniscient. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That was the plan, church. That was the mission. And Jesus is responding back to Satan and says, Away from me, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So it is the lesson for me and you this morning. Satan will do his best to tempt us to gain power through idolatry. This is why we do not worship Mary in this church. We admire Mary. We love Mary, Christ's mother. We think that she was God's instrument. What a great woman she was. But we do not worship Mary. In fact, the wise men, when they, remember when they brought gifts to to Christ, they found him in the house. They brought three particular gifts. And who did they worship? They worship the king. They worship Jesus. So we do not worship Mary. We do not worship angels. We do not worship pastors. We do not worship denominations. We do not worship the Pope. We worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Glory be to his name. When we worship other things, pay attention to this, or other people, we have misplaced our allegiance, our affections, and our will. Even though we may gain temporary power, you know, the result will be spiritual disaster. My friends, let us follow the example of Christ in worshiping God and God alone. Amen? Steps that you can take to deal with temptations wisely. I'm going to mention five or six steps. 
Take responsibility, number one. It is what I mean by that. You are responsible for your actions. You are responsible for what you do with your temptation. You know that expression, the devil made me do it? It's, it's kind of cute, you know, to blame it. Oh, the devil. No. You are responsible, my friend. Take responsibility. Be a man. Be a woman. Step number two, focus on the big picture. And here is what I mean by that. This will help you with fighting temptation. Here is what I mean by that. A temptation often offers a small picture, a small picture of the pleasures and profits of sin. But God wants you to see the big picture. When you fall into that temptation and sin, you are going to be affected. Your family might be affected. Your church will be affected. Your community will be affected. God's witness and testimony in this town will be affected. Focus on the big picture. That will help you fight it. Step number three. Identify areas of weaknesses in your life. And it is what I mean by that. Recognize, you know, we, have, we all have our own strengths and our own weaknesses. Your weaknesses may not be my weaknesses. My weaknesses may not be your weaknesses, but we all have them. So here is what I mean by that. You and God need to talk. You know your life better than anybody else. You need to recognize which aspects of your life are easy targets for Satan's attacks. Identify them. And stay away. For example, if computer is a temptation for you. If when you go on the computer, you have the temptation to look at sites that you shouldn't look at. I suggest that you don't even go on computer. Get it out. Stay away from it. If the TV is a temptation for you. I'm not against TV. I have it in my house too. But if it is a temptation for you, stay away for it, from it. Get it out of your house. It's your weak spot. If magazines are a temptation for you, be careful. If going to, a, to the country buffet is a temptation for you, don't even go to the country buffet. If sweets are a temptation for you, right here, be careful. Try to stay away from them. I keep telling my wife, honey, I know you love to bake, oh, but I love sweets. And I'm afraid that many times I have more than I need to. Amen? Identify areas of weaknesses in your life. It will help you in fighting off Satan. It is another thing that you can do. Take a break. And it is what I mean by that. By that. Don't let yourself get too hungry. Don't let yourself get too angry. Don't let yourself get too lonely. Don't let yourself get too tired. That's when Satan, that's when you're weak. You know, just like our immune system is weak, and boom, right away you're hit with that virus, because you're not taking your vitamins, you didn't get enough sleep. That's exactly how it is with temptation. Take a break. If you are too tired, take a break. I'm going out for a Sunday. See you guys the following Sunday. I need to spend more time with the Lord. I need to, I need to get some rest. Do it. Here is another step that you can take. Make yourself accountable to a friend. I cannot emphasize this enough. Find someone whom you can trust. And then contact that person when you are feeling tempted. Hey, check up on me. I'm having a bad week. I'm being tempted. Here is another step very crucial that you can take to deal wisely with temptation. Read the word of God. Amen. Let me say this again. Read the word of God. You won't be able to defend yourself against the enemy's attacks if you don't know the scripture. Yes? Read it. Study it. Memorize it. This last uh, summer, this couple of months ago, we had our vacation Bible school. And on Saturday, we had a carnival. For me... I think this was my fifth VBS. 
For me, this was, for me, this was the best. Because it looks like every year, I'm getting more and more exposed to people. I'm getting to make more friends in the community. In this uh, Saturday, last, that Saturday when we had the carnival, I was out in the parking lot mingling and talking to people. And I remember we had a canopy tent there in the back and we had nachos and cheese. And I got my portion there and I sat at a table along with a few other families from town and started talking with the family that was next to me. And they opened themselves up to me and they said, Pastor John, we are just so blessed by this church. And the lady speaking to me was in her 40s, about my age. And she says, look, we go to a church here in town. By the way, I'm not going to mention the name of the church because that's not important, okay? But she told me what the church was. She says, we go to a church here in town. She says, but I've been attending VBSs and, and uh, uh, Wednesday nights, uh, uh, kids, you know, ARC, or whatever was before, Awana. She said, I was attending that in the past. And she said, you know what, Pastor John? She said, in our church, we are not taught to memorize Bible verses. We are not trained to read the Bible. But she said, you know what? It's been many years since I, she was in her 40s, since I attended VBS here at your church and ARCs. But I still remember the verses that they taught us in VBS 30 or 40 years ago. You know what I said? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. 40 years have passed. Her church is not teaching the Bible and helping people memorize Bible verses. But she's still remembering because she came to this little church in the community. Hearing the word of God. Memorize the Bible. Study it. And then one last thing is make prayer a vital part of your life. Crucial. Having fellowship and conversation with the Lord each morning strengthens you, edifies you, alerts you to Satan's attacks every day. I want to end with 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Get us under your belt. Powerful verse in your arsenal to fight off Satan's attack. How about if we all say it together? No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to men. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide a way to escape also, so that you would be able to endure it. Amen. Would you please stand as we close with a song. After we sing, uh, let's see what number, 511, verses 1, 2, and 4, I would like to ask Brother, Brother Rick to come and close us in prayer. 511, verses 1, 2, and 4.
my blessed Lord I say. And verse 4. Every need His hand supplying. Every good in Him I say. On His strength divine relying. He is all in all to me. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. life to be and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see I'd just like to thank you here for coming here today and I just thank you for John for this message and temptation I think we all can day to day we're out there in this world temptations how it struggles this I just think of Gene you know, with his uh, problems he has with, with Chuck, I just, all other people in this church as well, you know, temptations every day, it just, it works on us, but we always come back to God and rely on him. Amen. So let's just pray now and at this time. Dear Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your love. We just pray that you just be with us and just make her stronger in you, Father, when temptations do come with us every day that you would make us stronger. We just pray now that you just be with us as we lead this church that uh, if there's anybody out there we come across, Father, we may be a, a better influence on them and help them as well. Yes. We just thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.